Krishna, Sanskrit pronunciation, K.R. Sanskrit, Kursna translate. Kursna is a major deity in Hinduism. He is worshipped as the eighth avatar of the god Vishnu and also as the supreme god in his own right. He is the god of compassion, tenderness, and love in Hinduism, and is one of the most popular and widely revered among Indian divinities. Krishna's birthday is celebrated every year by Hindus on Janmashtami according to the lunisolar Hindu calendar, which falls in late August or early September of the Gregorian calendar. The anecdotes and narratives of Krishna's life are generally titled as Krishna Leela. He is a central character in the Mahabharata, the Bhagavata Purana, and the Bhagavad Gita, and is mentioned in many Hindu philosophical, theological, and mythological texts. They portray him in various perspectives, a god-child, a prankster, a model lover, a divine hero, and as the universal supreme being. His iconography reflects these legends, and shows him in different stages of his life, such as an infant eating butter, a young boy playing a flute, a young man with Radha or surrounded by women devotees, or a friendly charioteer giving counsel to Arjuna. The synonyms of Krishna have been traced to 1st millennium BCE literature. In some sub-traditions, Krishna is worshipped as Svayam Bhagavan, and this is sometimes referred to as Krishnaism. These sub-traditions arose in the context of the medieval era Bhakti movement. Krishna-related literature has inspired numerous performance arts such as Bharatnatyam, Kathakali, Kuchipudi, Odissi, and Manipuri dance. He is a pan-Hindu god, but is particularly revered in some locations such as Vrindavan in Uttar Pradesh, the Jagannatha aspect in Odisha, Mayapur in West Bengal, Dwarka and Junagadh in Gujarat, in the form of Vithoba in Pandharpur, Maharashtra, Nithdwara in Rajasthan, and Guruvayur in Kerala. Since the 1960s, the worship of Krishna has also spread to the Western world and to Africa, largely due to the work of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness Topic. Names and epithets The name, Krishna, originates from the Sanskrit word kursna, which is primarily an adjective meaning black, dark, or dark blue. The waning moon is called Krishna Paksha, relating to the adjective meaning darkening. The name is also interpreted sometimes as all attractive. As a name of Vishnu, Krishna is listed as the 57th name in the Vishnu Sahasranama. Based on his name, Krishna is often depicted in idols as black or blue skinned. Krishna is also known by various other names, epithets, and titles that reflect his many associations and attributes. Among the most common names are Mohan, enchanter, Govinda, chief herdsman, and Gopala, protector of the go, which means soul or the cows. Some names for Krishna hold regional importance. Jagannatha, found in Puri Hindu temple, is a popular incarnation in Odisha state and nearby regions of eastern India. Topic: <inaudible> Iconography. <inaudible> Krishna is represented in the Indian traditions in many ways, but with some common features. His iconography typically depicts him with black, dark, or blue skin, like Vishnu. However, ancient and medieval reliefs and stone-based arts depict him in the natural color of the material out of which he is formed, both in India and in Southeast Asia. In some texts, his skin is poetically described as the color of jambal jamun, a purple-colored fruit. Krishna is often depicted wearing a peacock feather wreath or crown, and playing the bansuri Indian flute. In this form, he is usually shown standing with one leg bent in front of the other in the trabanga posture. He is sometimes accompanied by cows or a calf, which symbolize the divine herdsman Govinda. Alternatively, he is shown as a romantic and seductive man with the gopis milkmaids, often making music or playing pranks. In other icons, he is a part of battlefield scenes of the epic Mahabharata. He is shown as a charioteer, notably when he is addressing the Pandava prince Arjuna character, symbolically reflecting the events that led to the Bhagavad Gita, a scripture of Hinduism. 
In these popular depictions, Krishna appears in the front as the charioteer, either as a counsel listening to Arjuna, or as the driver of the chariot while Arjuna aims his arrows in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Alternate icons of Krishna show him as a baby, Bala Krishna, the child Krishna, a toddler crawling on his hands and knees, a dancing child, or an innocent looking child playfully stealing or consuming butter, chor, holding Ladu in his hand, Ladu Gopal, or as a cosmic infant sucking his toe while floating on a banyan leaf during the Pralaya, the cosmic dissolution observed by sage Markandeya. Regional variations in the iconography of Krishna are seen in his different forms, such as Jagannatha in Odisha, Vithoba in Maharashtra, Srinathja in Rajasthan and Guruvayurappan in Kerala guidelines for the preparation of Krishna icons in design and architecture are described in medieval-era Sanskrit texts on Hindu temple arts such as Vaihanasa Agama, Vishnu Dharmatara, Brihat Samhita, and Agni Purana. Similarly, early medieval-era Tamil texts also contain guidelines for sculpting Krishna and Rukmini. Several statues made according to these guidelines are in the collections of the Government Museum, Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> Historical and literary sources The earliest text containing detailed descriptions of Krishna as a personality is the epic Mahabharata, which depicts Krishna as an incarnation of Vishnu. Krishna is central to many of the main stories of the epic. The 18 chapters of the sixth book of the epic that constitute the Bhagavad Gita contain the advice of Krishna to Arjuna on the battlefield. The Harivamsa, a later appendix to the Mahabharata, contains a detailed version of Krishna's childhood and youth. The Chandogya Upanishad, estimated to have been composed sometime between the 8th and 6th centuries BCE, has been another source of speculation regarding Krishna in ancient India. The verse 3, XVII.6 mentions Krishna in Krishnaya Devakiputra, Sanskrit, Krishnaya Devakiputra as a student of the sage Gora of the Anjirasa family. This phrase, which means, to Krishna the son of Devaki, has been mentioned by scholars such as Max Muller as a potential source of fables and Vedic lore about Krishna in the Mahabharata and other ancient literature, only potential, because this verse could have been interpolated into the text, or the Krishna Devakiputra, could be different from the deity Krishna. These doubts are supported by the fact that the much later age Sandilya Bhakti Sutras, a treatise on Krishna, cites later age compilations such as the Narayana Upanishad but never cites this verse of the Chandogya Upanishad. Other scholars disagree that the Krishna mentioned along with Devika in the ancient Upanishad is unrelated to the later Hindu god of the Bhagavad Gita fame. For example, Archer states that the coincidence of the two names appearing together in the same Upanishad verse cannot be dismissed easily. Yaskas Nirukta, an etymological dictionary published around the 6th century BCE, contains a reference to the Shamantaka jewel in the possession of Akrura, a motif from the well known Puranic story about Krishna. Shatapatha Brahmana and Aitareya Aranyaka associate Krishna with his Vrishni origins. In Ashtadayi, authored by the ancient grammarian Panini, probably belonged to the 5th or 6th century BCE, Vasudeva, son of Vasudeva, and Arjuna, as recipients of worship, are referred to together in the same sutra. Megasthenes, a Greek ethnographer and an ambassador of Seleucus I to the court of Chandragupta Maurya towards the end of 4th century BCE, made reference to Heracles in his famous work Indica. This text is now lost to history, but was quoted in secondary literature by later Greeks such as Arian, Diodorus, and Strabo. According to these texts, Megasthenes mentioned that the Sauracenoi tribe of India, who worshipped Heracles, had two major cities named Methora and Chlysobora, and a navigable river named the Jobares. According to Edwin Bryant, a professor of Indian religions known for his publications on Krishna, there is little doubt that the Sauracenoi refers to the Shurasenas, a branch of the Yadu dynasty to which Krishna belonged. The word Heracles, states Bryant, is likely a Greek phonetic equivalent of Hari Krishna, as is Methora of Mathura, Klysobora of Krishnapura, and the Jobares of Jamuna. Later, when Alexander the Great launched his campaign in the northwest Indian subcontinent, his associates recalled that the soldiers of Porus were carrying an image of Heracles. The Buddhist Pali Canon and the Gata Jataka no. polemically mention the devotees of Vasudeva and Baladeva. These texts have many peculiarities and may be a garbled and confused version of the Krishna legends. 
The texts of Jainism mention these tales as well, also with many peculiarities and different versions, in their legends about Tirthankaras. This inclusion of Krishna-related legends in ancient Buddhist and Jaina literature suggests that Krishna theology was existent and important in the religious landscape observed by non-Hindu traditions of ancient India. Indo-Greek coinage Around 180 BCE the Indo-Greek king Agathocles issued some coinage bearing images of deities that are now interpreted as being related to Vaisnava imagery in India. The deities displayed on the coins appear to be Vishnu's avatars Balarama Sankarshana with attributes consisting of the Gata Mace and the Plough, and Vasudeva Krishna with attributes of the Shanka Konk and the Sudarshana Chakra Wheel. According to Boparachi, the headdress on top of the deity is actually a misrepresentation of a shaft with a half-moon parasol on top chatra. The ancient Sanskrit grammarian Patanjali in his Mahabhashya makes several references to Krishna and his associates found in later Indian texts. In his commentary on Panini's verse 3.1.26, he also uses the word kamsavada or the killing of kamsa, an important part of the legend surrounding Krishna. Heliodorus Pillar and other inscriptions A pillar with a Brahmi script inscription was discovered by colonial-era archaeologists in the central Indian state of Madhya Pradesh. Using modern techniques, it has been dated to between 125 and 100 BCE, and traced to an Indo-Greek who served as an ambassador of the Greek king Antialchidas to a regional Indian king. Named after the Indo-Greek, it is now known as the Heliodorus Pillar. Its inscription is a dedication to Vasudeva, another name for Krishna in the Indian tradition. Scholars consider the Vasudeva to be referring to a deity, because the inscription states that it was constructed by the Bhagavata Heliodorus, and that it is a Garuda Pillar. Both are Vishnu Krishna related terms. Additionally, the inscription includes a Krishna-related verse from Chapter 11.7 of the Mahabharata stating that the path to immortality in heaven is to correctly live a life of three virtues, self-temperance generosity kaga or tayaga, and vigilance apramada. .The Heliodorus inscription is not an isolated evidence. Three Hathabada inscriptions and one Gosundi inscription, all located in the state of Rajasthan and dated by modern methodology to the 1st century BCE, mention Samkarsana and Vasudeva, also mention that the structure was built for their worship. These four inscriptions are notable for being some of the oldest known Sanskrit inscriptions. A Mora stone slab found at the Mathura Vrindavan archaeological site in Uttar Pradesh, held now in the Mathura Museum, has a Brahmi inscription. It is dated to the 1st century CE and lists five Vrishni heroes, Balarama, Krishna, Pradyumna, Aniruddha, and Samba. Another terracotta plaque from the same site shows an infant being carried by an adult over his head, similar to the legend about Krishna's birth. Many Puranas tell Krishna's life story or some highlights from it. Two Puranas, the Bhagavata Purana and the Vishnu Purana, contain the most elaborate telling of Krishna's story, but the life stories of Krishna in these and other texts vary, and contain significant inconsistencies. The Bhagavata Purana consists of twelve books subdivided into 332 chapters, with a cumulative total of between 16,000 and 18,000 verses depending on the version. The tenth book of the text, which contains about 4,000 verses approximately 25% and is dedicated to legends about Krishna, has been the most popular and widely studied part of this text. <laughs> Life and legends This summary is a mythological account, based on literary details from the Mahabharata, the Harivamsa, the Bhagavata Purana, and the Vishnu Purana. The scenes from the narrative are set in ancient India, mostly in the present states of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan, Haryana, Delhi, and Gujarat. The legends about Krishna's life are called Krishna Karitas Iast, Karznakaritas. Birth. In Krishna Karitas, Krishna is born to Devaki and her husband, King Vasudeva of the Yadava clan in Mathura. Devaki's brother is a tyrant named Kansa. 
At Devaki's wedding, according to Puranic legends, Kanza is told by fortune tellers that a child of Devaki would kill him. Kanza arranges to kill all of Devaki's children. When Krishna is born, Vasudeva secretly carries the infant Krishna away across the Yamuna and exchanges him. When Kanza tries to kill the newborn, the exchanged baby appears as the Hindu goddess Durga, warning him that his death has arrived in his kingdom, and then disappears, according to the legends in the Puranas. Krishna grows up with Nanda Baba and his wife Yasoda near modern-day Mathura. Two of Krishna's siblings also survive, namely Balarama and Subhadra, according to these legends. The day of birth of Krishna is celebrated as Krishna Janmashtami. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Childhood and Youth. The legends of Krishna's childhood and youth describe him as a cow herder, a mischievous boy whose pranks earns him the nickname a makan chor, butter thief, and a protector who steals the hearts of the people in both Gokul and Vrindavana. The texts state, for example, that Krishna lifts the Gavardhana hill to protect the inhabitants of Vrindavana from devastating rains and floods. Other legends describe him as an enchanter and playful lover of the gopis milkmaids of Vrindavana, especially Radha. These metaphor filled love stories are known as the Rasa Lila and were romanticized in the poetry of Jayadeva, author of the Gita Govinda. They are also central to the development of the Krishna Bhakti traditions worshipping Radha Krishna. Krishna's childhood illustrates the Hindu concept of Lila, playing for fun and enjoyment and not for sport or gain. His interaction with the gopis at the Rasa dance or Rasa Lila is an example. Krishna plays his flute and the gopis come immediately, from whatever they were doing, to the banks of the Yamuna River, and join him in singing and dancing. Even those who could not physically be there join him through meditation. He is the spiritual essence and the love eternal in existence. The gopis metaphorically represent the prakriti matter and the impermanent body. This lila is a constant theme in the legends of Krishna's childhood and youth. Even when he is battling with a serpent to protect others, he is described in Hindu texts as if he were playing a game. This quality of playfulness in Krishna is celebrated during festivals as Rasa Lila and Janmash Tasami, where Hindus in some regions such as Maharashtra playfully mimic his legends, such as by making human gymnastic pyramids to break open handies clay pots hung high in the air to steal butter or buttermilk, spilling it all over the group. Topic. Adulthood Krishna legends then describe his return to Mathura. He overthrows and kills the tyrant king, his uncle Kansa after quelling several assassination attempts by Kansa. He reinstates Kansa's father, Ugrasena, as the king of the Yadavas and becomes a leading prince at the court. In one version of the Krishna story, as narrated by Shanta Rao, Krishna after Kansa's death leads the Yadavas to the newly built city of Dwaraka. Thereafter Pandavas rise. Krishna befriends Arjuna and the other Pandava princes of the Kuru kingdom. Krishna plays a key role in the Mahabharata. The Bhagavata Purana describes eight wives of Krishna that appear in sequence as Rukmini, Satyabhama, Jambavati, Kalindi, Maitravinda, Nagnahiti also called Satya, Bhadra, and Lakshmana also called Madra. According to Dennis Hudson, this is a metaphor where each of the eight wives signifies a different aspect of him. According to George Williams, Vaishnava texts mention all gopis as wives of Krishna, but this is spiritual symbolism of devotional relationship and Krishna's complete loving devotion to each and everyone devoted to him. His wife is sometimes called Rahini, Radha, Rukmini, Svamini ji or others. In Krishna-related Hindu traditions, he is most commonly seen with Radha. All of his wives and his lover Radha are considered in the Hindu tradition to be the avatars of the goddess Lakshmi, the consort of Vishnu. Gopis are considered as Radha's many forms and manifestations. Topic: <inaudible> Kurukshetra War and Bhagavad Gita. According to the epic poem Mahabharata, Krishna becomes Arjuna's charioteer for the Kurukshetra War, but on the condition that he personally will not raise any weapon. Upon arrival at the battlefield, and seeing that the enemies are his family, his grandfather, and his cousins and loved ones, Arjuna is moved and says his heart will not allow him to fight and kill others. He would rather renounce the kingdom and put down his Gandive Arjuna's bow. 
Krishna then advises him about the nature of life, ethics, and morality when one is faced with a war between good and evil, the impermanence of matter, the permanence of the soul and the good, duties and responsibilities, the nature of true peace and bliss and the different types of yoga to reach this state of bliss and inner liberation. This conversation between Krishna and Arjuna is presented as a discourse called the Bhagavad Gita. Death and Ascension It is stated in the Indian texts that the legendary Kurukshetra war leads to the death of all the hundred sons of Gandhari. After Duryodhana's death, Krishna visits Gandhari to offer his condolences when Gandhari and Dhritarashtra visited Kurukshetra, as stated in Sri Parva. Feeling that Krishna deliberately did not put an end to the war, in a fit of rage and sorrow Gandhari said, Thou were indifferent to the Kurus and the Pandavas whilst they slew each other, therefore, O Govinda, thou shalt be the slayer of thy own kinsmen. According to the Mahabharata, a fight breaks out at a festival among the Yadavas, who end up killing each other. Mistaking the sleeping Krishna for a deer, a hunter named Hara shoots an arrow that fatally injures him. Krishna forgives Hara and dies. The pilgrimage Tirtha site of Balka in Gujarat marks the location where Krishna is believed to have died. It is also known as Dahatsarga, states Diana Elek, a term that literally means the place where Krishna gave up his body. The Bhagavata Purana in Book 11, Chapter 31 states that after his death, Krishna returned to his transcendent abode directly because of his yogic concentration. Waiting gods such as Brahma and Indra were unable to trace the path Krishna took to leave his human incarnation and return to his abode. Versions and interpretations There are numerous versions of Krishna's life story, of which three are most studied, the Harivamsa, the Bhagavata Purana, and the Vishnu Purana. They share the basic storyline but vary significantly in their specifics, details, and styles. The most original composition, the Harivamsa is told in a realistic style that describes Krishna's life as a poor herder but weaves in poetic and elusive fantasy. It ends on a triumphal note, not with the death of Krishna. Differing in some details, the fifth book of the Vishnu Purana moves away from Harivamsa realism and embeds Krishna in mystical terms and eulogies. The Vishnu Purana manuscripts exist in many versions. The 10th and 11th books of the Bhagavata Purana are widely considered to be a poetic masterpiece, full of imagination and metaphors, with no relation to the realism of pastoral life found in the Harivamsa. Krishna's life is presented as a cosmic play, Lila, where his youth is set as a princely life with his foster father Nanda portrayed as a king. Krishna's life is closer to that of a human being in Harivamsa, but as a symbolic universe in the Bhagavata Purana, where Krishna is within the universe and beyond it, as well as the universe itself, always. The Bhagavata Purana manuscripts also exist in many versions, in numerous Indian languages. <laughs> <laughs> Proposed datings The date of Krishna's birth is celebrated every year as Janmashtami, according to Guy Beck. Most scholars of Hinduism and Indian history accept the historicity of Krishna, that he was a real male person, whether human or divine, who lived on Indian soil by at least 1000 BCE and interacted with many other historical persons within the cycles of the epic and Puranic histories. Yet, Beck also notes that there is an enormous number of contradictions and discrepancies surrounding the chronology of Krishna's life as depicted in the Sanskrit canon." Lanvanya Vemzani states that Krishna can be inferred to have lived between 3227 BCE to 3102 BCE from the Puranas. A number of scholars, such as A. K. Bansal, B. V. Raman places Krishna's birth year as 3228 BCE. A paper presented in a conference in 2004 by a group of archaeologists, religious scholars and astronomers from Somnath Trust of Gujarat, which was organized at Prabha's Patan, the supposed location of the where Krishna spent his last moments, fixes the death of Sri Krishna on 18 February 3102 BC predicted at the age of 125 years and seven months. In contrast, according to mythologies in the Jain tradition, Krishna was a cousin of Naminatha, the 22nd Tirthankara of the Jain. Naminatha is believed in the Jain tradition to have been born 84,000 years before the 9th century BCE Parshvanatha. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Philosophy and Theology. A wide range of theological and philosophical ideas are presented through Krishna in Hindu texts. Ramanuja, a Hindu theologian whose works were influential in Bhakti movement, presented him in terms of qualified monism Madhvacharya, a Hindu philosopher whose works led to the founding of Haridasa sect of Vaishnavism, presented Krishna in the framework of dualism Jiva Goswami, a saint from Gaudiya Vaishnava school, described Krishna theology in terms of Bhakti Yoga and Achintya Beta Abheda. Krishna theology is presented in a pure monism Advaita, called Shuddhadvaita framework by Vallabha Acharya, who was the founder of Pushti sect of Vaishnavism. Madhusudana Sarasvati, an India philosopher, presented Krishna theology in non-dualism monism framework Advaita Vedanta, while Adi Shankara, who is credited for unifying and establishing the main currents of thought in Hinduism, mentioned Krishna in his early 8th century discussions on Panchayatana Puja, the Bhagavata Purana, a popular text on Krishna considered to be like a scripture in Assam, synthesizes an Advaita, Samkhya, and Yoga framework for Krishna but one that proceeds through loving devotion to Krishna. Bryant describes the synthesis of ideas in Bhagavata Purana as The philosophy of the Bhagavata is a mixture of Vedanta terminology, Samkhyan metaphysics and devotionalized yoga praxis. The tenth book promotes Krishna as the highest absolute personal aspect of Godhead, the personality behind the term Ishvara and the ultimate aspect of Brahman. While Sheridan and Pinchman both affirm Bryant's view, the latter adds that the Vedantic view emphasized in the Bhagavata is non-dualist with a difference. In conventional non-dual Vedanta all reality is an interconnected and one, the Bhagavata posits that the reality is interconnected and plural. Across the various theologies and philosophies, the common theme presents Krishna as the essence and symbol of divine love, with human life and love as a reflection of the divine. The longing and love-filled legends of Krishna and the gopis, his playful pranks as a baby, as well as his later dialogues with other characters, are philosophically treated as metaphors for the human longing for the divine and for meaning, and the play between the universals and the human soul. Krishna's Lila is a theology of love play. According to John Collar, "...love is presented not simply as a means to salvation, it is the highest life." Human love is God's love. Other texts that include Krishna, such as the Bhagavad Gita, have attracted numerous basya commentaries in the Hindu traditions. Though only a part of the Hindu epic Mahabharata, it has functioned as an independent spiritual guide. It allegorically raises through Krishna and Arjuna the ethical and moral dilemmas of human life, then presents a spectrum of answers, weighing in on the ideological questions on human freedoms, choices, and responsibilities towards self and towards others. This Krishna dialogue has attracted numerous interpretations, from being a metaphor of inner human struggle teaching non-violence, to being a metaphor of outer human struggle teaching a rejection of quietism to persecution. Influence Vaishnavism The worship of Krishna is part of Vaishnavism, a major tradition within Hinduism. Krishna is considered a full avatar of Vishnu, or one with Vishnu himself. However, the exact relationship between Krishna and Vishnu is complex and diverse, with Krishna sometimes considered an independent deity and supreme. Vaishnavas accept many incarnations of Vishnu, but Krishna is particularly important. Their theologies are generally centered either on Vishnu or an avatar such as Krishna as supreme. The terms Krishnaism and Vishnuism have sometimes been used to distinguish the two, the former implying that Krishna is the transcendent supreme being. All Vaishnava traditions recognize Krishna as the eighth avatar of Vishnu, others identify Krishna with Vishnu, while traditions such as Gaudiya Vaishnavism, Vallabha Sampradaya, and the Nimbarka Sampradaya regard Krishna as the Svayam Bhagavan, the original form of Lord, or the same as the concept of Brahman in Hinduism. Gitagavinda of Jayadeva considers Krishna to be the Supreme Lord while the ten incarnations are his forms. Swaminarayan, the founder of the Swaminarayan Sampraday, also worshipped Krishna as God himself. Greater Krishnaism corresponds to the second and dominant phase of Vaishnavism, revolving around the cults of the Vasudeva, Krishna, and Gopala of the late Vedic period. Today the faith has a significant following outside of India as well. <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Early Traditions. The deity Krishna Vasudeva, Kursna Vasudeva, Krishna, the son of Vasudeva, is historically one of the earliest forms of worship in Krishnaism and Vaishnavism. It is believed to be a significant tradition of the early history of Krishna religion in antiquity. Thereafter, there was an amalgamation of various similar traditions. These include ancient Bhagavadism, the cult of Gopala, of Krishna Govinda, cow finding Krishna, of Bala Krishna, baby Krishna, and of Krishna Gopivalaba, Krishna the lover. According to Andre Couture, the Harivamsa contributed to the synthesis of various characters as aspects of Krishna. Topic: <laughs> Bhakti tradition. The use of the term bhakti, meaning devotion, is not confined to any one deity. However, Krishna is an important and popular focus of the devotionalism tradition within Hinduism, particularly among the Vaishnava sects. Devotees of Krishna subscribe to the concept of lila, meaning divine play, as the central principle of the universe. It is a form of bhakti yoga, one of three types of yoga discussed by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Topic. Indian subcontinent The Bhakti movements devoted to Krishna became prominent in southern India in the 7th to 9th centuries CE. The earliest works included those of the Ilvar saints of the Tamil country. A major collection of their works is the Divya Prabandham. The Ilvar Andal's popular collection of songs Tirupavai, in which she conceives of herself as a gopi, is the most famous of the oldest works in this genre. The movement originated in South India during the 7th CE, spreading northwards from Tamil Nadu through Karnataka and Maharashtra. By the 15th century, it was established in Bengal and northern India. Early bhakti pioneers include Nimbarka, 12th or 13th century CE, but most emerged later, including Vallabhacharya, 15th century CE, and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They started their own schools, namely Nimbarka Sampradaya, Vallabha Sampradaya, and Gaudiya Vaishnavism, with Krishna as the supreme god. In the Deccan, particularly in Maharashtra, saint poets of the Varkari sect such as Dnyaneshwar, Namdev, Janabai, Eknath, and Tukaram promoted the worship of Vithoba, a local form of Krishna, from the beginning of the 13th century until the late 18th century. In southern India, Parandara Dasa and Kanakadasa of Karnataka composed songs devoted to the Krishna image of Udupi. Rupa Goswami of Gaudiya Vaishnavism has compiled a comprehensive summary of bhakti called Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. In South India, the Acharyas of the Sri Sampradaya have written everentially about Krishna in most of their works, including the Thirupavai by Andal and Gopala Vimshati by Vedanta Desika. Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Kerala states have many major Krishna temples, and Janmashtami is one of the widely celebrated festivals in South India. Outside Asia By 1965 the Krishna Bhakti movement had spread outside India after Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada as instructed by his guru, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Thakura travelled from his homeland in West Bengal to New York City. A year later in 1966, after gaining many followers, he was able to form the International Society for Krishna Consciousness popularly known as the Hare Krishna movement. The purpose of this movement was to write about Krishna in English and to share the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy with people in the Western world by spreading the teachings of the Saint Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the biographies of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the mantra he received when he was given diksha or initiation in Gaya was the six-word verse of the Kali Santarana Upanishad, namely, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare. In Gaudiya tradition, it is the Maha Mantra, or Great Mantra, about Krishna Bhakti. Its chanting was known as Hari Nama Sankirtana. The Maha Mantra gained the attention of George Harrison and John Lennon of the Beatles fame, and Harrison produced a 1969 recording of the mantra by devotees from the London Radha Krishna Temple. Titled, Hare Krishna Mantra, the song reached the top 20 on the UK music charts and was also successful in West Germany and Czechoslovakia. The mantra of the Upanishad thus helped bring Bhaktivedanta and Iskan ideas about Krishna into the West. 
ISCKON has built many Krishna temples in the West, as well as other locations such as South Africa. Southeast Asia Krishna is found in Southeast Asian history and art, but to a far less extent than Shiva, Durga, Nandi, Agastya, and Buddha. In temples of the archaeological sites in hilly volcanic Java, Indonesia, temple reliefs do not portray his pastoral life or his role as the erotic lover, nor do the historic Javanese Hindu texts. Rather, either his childhood or the life as a king and Arjuna's companion have been more favored. The most elaborate temple arts of Krishna are found in a series of Krishnayana reliefs in the Prambanan Hindu temple complex near Yogyakarta. These are dated to the 9th century CE. Krishna remained a part of the Javanese cultural and theological fabric through the 14th century, as evidenced by the 14th century Penataran reliefs along with those of the Hindu god Rama in East Java. Before Islam replaced Buddhism and Hinduism on the island, the medieval era arts of Vietnam and Cambodia feature Krishna. The earliest surviving sculptures and reliefs are from the 6th and 7th century, and these include Vaishnavism iconography. According to John Guy, the curator and director of Southeast Asian Arts at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Krishna Gavardhana art from 6th, 7th century Vietnam at Da Nang, and 7th century Cambodia at Phnom Da Cave in Angkor Bore, are some of the most sophisticated of this era. Krishna iconography has also been found in Thailand, along with those of Surya and Vishnu. For example, a large number of sculptures and icons have been found in the Si Tep and Klangne sites in the Pechabun region of northern Thailand. These are dated to about the 7th and 8th century, from both the Funan and Junla periods archaeological sites. <laughs> <laughs> Performance arts Indian dance and music theatre traces its origins and techniques to the ancient Sama Veda and Natyasastra texts. The stories enacted and the numerous choreographic themes are inspired by the mythologies and legends in Hindu texts, including Krishna related literature such as Harivamsa and Bhagavata Purana. The Krishna stories have played a key role in the history of Indian theatre, music, and dance, particularly through the tradition of Rasalila. These are dramatic enactments of Krishna's childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. One common scene involves Krishna playing flute in Rasa Leela, only to be heard by certain gopis cowherd maidens, which is theologically supposed to represent divine call only heard by certain enlightened beings. Some of the text's legends have inspired secondary theatre literature such as the eroticism in Gita Govinda. Krishna related literature such as the Bhagavata Purana accords a metaphysical significance to the performances and treats them as religious ritual, infusing daily life with spiritual meaning, thus representing a good, honest, happy life. Similarly, Krishna inspired performances aim to cleanse the hearts of faithful actors and listeners. Singing, dancing, and performance of any part of Krishna Lila is an act of remembering the Dharma in the text, as a form of para-bhakti To remember Krishna at any time and in any art, asserts the text, is to worship the good and the divine. Classical dance styles such as Kathak, Odissi, Manipuri, Kuchipudi and Bharatnatyam in particular are known for their Krishna-related performances. Krishnatam traces its origins to Krishna legends, and is linked to another major classical Indian dance form called Kathakali. Bryant summarizes the influence of Krishna stories in the Bhagavata Purana as, it has inspired more derivative literature, poetry, drama, dance, theatre and art than any other text in the history of Sanskrit literature, with the possible exception of the Ramayana. Other religions <inaudible> Jainism The Jainism tradition lists 63 Salakapurusa or notable figures which, amongst others, includes the 24 Tirthankaras spiritual teachers and nine sets of triads. One of these triads is Krishna as the Vasudeva, Balarama as the Baladeva, and Jarasandha as the Prati Vasudeva. In each age of the Jain cyclic time is born a Vasudeva with an elder brother termed the Baladeva. Between the triads, Baladeva upholds the principle of non violence, a central idea of Jainism. The villain is the Prati Vasudeva, who attempts to destroy the world. 
To save the world, Vasudeva Krishna has to forsake the non-violence principle and kill the Prati Vasudeva. The stories of these triads can be found in the Harivamsa Purana 8th century CE of Jinasena not be confused with its namesake, the addendum to Mahabharata and the Trishashti Shalakapurusha Karita of Himachandra. The story of Krishna's life in the Puranas of Jainism follows the same general outline as those in the Hindu texts, but in details they are very different. They include Jain Tirthankaras as characters in the story, and generally are polemically critical of Krishna, unlike the versions found in the Mahabharata, the Bhagavata Purana, and the Vishnu Purana. For example, Krishna loses battles in the Jain versions, and his gopis and his clan of Yadavas die in a fire created by an ascetic named Devipayana. Similarly, after dying from the hunter Hara's arrow, the Jaina texts state Krishna goes to the third hell in Jain cosmology, while his brother is said to go to the sixth heaven. Vimalasuri is attributed to be the author of the Jain version of the Harivamsa Purana, but no manuscripts have been found that confirm this. It is likely that later Jain scholars, probably Jinasena of the 8th century, wrote a complete version of Krishna legends in the Jain tradition and credited it to the ancient Vimalasuri. Partial and older versions of the Krishna story are available in Jain literature, such as in the Antagata Dasau of the Svetambara Agama tradition. In other Jain texts, Krishna is stated to be a cousin of the 22nd Tirthankara, Naminatha. The Jain texts state that Naminatha taught Krishna all the wisdom that he later gave to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. According to Jeffrey D. Long, a professor of religion known for his publications on Jainism, this connection between Krishna and Naminatha has been a historic reason for Jains to accept, read, and cite the Bhagavad Gita as a spiritually important text, celebrate Krishna-related festivals, and intermingle with Hindus as spiritual cousins. Buddhism The story of Krishna occurs in the Jataka tales in Buddhism. The Vidharapandita Jataka mentions Madhura Sanskrit, Mathura, the Gata Jataka mentions Kamsa, Devagaba SK, Devaki, Upasagara or Vasudeva, Govadana SK, Gavardhana, Baladeva Balarama, and Kana or Kasava SK, Krishna, Kashava. Like the Jaina versions of the Krishna legends, the Buddhist versions such as one in Gata Jataka follow the general outline of the story, but are different from the Hindu versions as well. For example, the Buddhist legend describes Devagaba Devaki to have been isolated in a palace built upon a pole, after she is born, so no future husband could reach her. Krishna's father similarly is described as a powerful king, but who meets up with Devagaba anyway, and to whom Kamsa gives away his sister Devagaba in marriage. The siblings of Krishna are not killed by Kamsa, though he tries. In the Buddhist version of the legend, all of Krishna's siblings grow to maturity, Krishna and his siblings' capital becomes Dvaravati. The Arjuna and Krishna interaction is missing in the Jataka version. A new legend is included, wherein Krishna laments an uncontrollable sorrow when his son dies, and a Ghatapandita feigns madness to teach Krishna a lesson. The Jataka tale also includes an internecine destruction among his siblings after they all get drunk. Krishna also dies in the Buddhist legend by the hand of a hunter named Hara, but while he is traveling to a frontier city. Mistaking Krishna for a pig, Hara throws a spear that fatally pierces his feet, causing Krishna great pain and then his death. At the end of this Gata Jataka discourse, the Buddhist text declares that Sariputta, one of the revered disciples of the Buddha in the Buddhist tradition, was incarnated as Krishna in his previous life to learn lessons on grief from the Buddha in his prior rebirth. Then he master declared the truce, and identified the birth. At that time, Ananda was Rohiniya, Sariputta was Vasudeva Krishna, the followers of the Buddha were the other persons, and I myself was Gautapandita. While the Buddhist Jataka texts co-opt Krishna Vasudeva and make him a student of the Buddha in his previous life, the Hindu texts co-opt the Buddha and make him an avatar of Vishnu. The divine boy Krishna as an embodiment of wisdom and endearing prankster forms a part of the pantheon of gods in Japanese Buddhism. Other Krishna is mentioned as Krishna Avatar in the Shobhas Avatar, a composition in Dasam Granth traditionally and historically attributed to Guru Gobind Singh. Baha'is believe that Krishna was a manifestation of God, or one in a line of prophets who have revealed the Word of God progressively for a gradually maturing humanity. 
In this way, Krishna shares an exalted station with Abraham, Moses, Zoroaster, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, the Bab, and the founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah, Ahmadiyya, a 20th century Islamic movement, consider Krishna as one of their ancient prophets. Ghulam Ahmad stated that he was himself a prophet in the likeness of prophets such as Krishna, Jesus, and Muhammad, who had come to earth as a latter-day reviver of religion and morality. Krishna worship or reverence has been adopted by several new religious movements since the 19th century, and he is sometimes a member of an eclectic pantheon in occult texts, along with Greek, Buddhist, biblical, and even historical figures. For instance, Eduard Schure, an influential figure in perennial philosophy and occult movements, considered Krishna a great initiate, while theosophists regard Krishna as an incarnation of Maitreya, one of the masters of the ancient wisdom, the most important spiritual teacher for humanity along with Buddha. Krishna was canonized by Aleister Crowley and is recognized as a saint of Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica in the Gnostic Mass of Ordo Templi Orientis. See also Bhagavan Dashavatara Hinduism in Russia Prem Mandir Vrindavan Radha Vedanta Srinathja Notes <laughs>